So in this part, we're going to look into the different KTM objects we can allocate into the kernel. We're going to look into how we can do that from userlum by calling certain KTM related APIs. We're going to look into creating transactions, transaction managers, resource managers, and enlistment. We're going to also see that they use different abbreviations for all of these different objects. TX for transactions, TM for transaction manager, RM for resource manager, and EN for enlistment. Okay. Let's get started. So a transaction structure is kind of what you deal with at the very beginning. When you say you are going to do some work, you're going to need to create a transaction. And so there is a create transaction API, which as it, its name implies, allows you to create a transaction. It gives you back a handle to a transaction. And on the kernel side, there is actually a K transaction structure. By reverse engineering and debugging, you can realize that the transaction is allocated on the non-page pool and it has a specific pool tag TMTX, which can be useful when poking around in memory with WinDBG. It seems the convention is to have the TM suffix to indicate it is in the KTM kernel component. And then they use a suffix to indicate the type of the object. So here for a transaction, they use TX and we end up with the TM TX pull tag. But this is the type of thing, although the Kaspersky blog also says it, there's something you could realize when playing with the KTM APIs, that basically all KTM objects are allocated on the non-page pool. And so you will probably have to research the non-page pool if you don't know anything about it at that time, which is perfectly fine and will do it. And so this is an example of what we find allows us to create a transaction. So the arguments for the create transaction API are documented on the MSDN and they are not particularly useful or relevant. In our perspective, we just want a transaction to exist so we can interact with KTM. And so we don't really need to pass any useful argument, as you can see. And you can make sure it works by debugging in the kernel and making sure that K transaction structure is created and that we get a handle in New Zealand. So just looking at the K transaction structure on Virgilus, because as you can see, most of what we pass to the function in New Zealand isn't that interesting. Basically, most of the fields in the K transaction structure in kernel aren't that interesting for us either. But if you look at it, there are a few things that stand out. There is a cookie, which seems to be associated with all KTM structures. Basically, they each have their own little cookie value, which is unique to the type. So all K transaction structures will have the same cookie value. And then all K resource manager structures will have the same cookie value as well. And this is useful when you are digging around memory in WinBag. So they all have a mutex associated with them, which gives you an idea about the type of logic that might be used to accessing them. So, you know, the fact that a mutex exists implies there is going to be potentially multiple threads trying to manipulate these types of structures, which can hint to the type of bugs you might be finding too. And again, this is a scenario where the structure is quite big. And at first, it seems overwhelming, but we know the structure exists and it is documented in the symbols. There are a few things in it that are interesting, but we don't need to go through it all and look at exactly what our every field is about. We just know that a transaction exists. We know that we are trying to reverse that big KTM function that we don't know much about at the moment. And we can assume that maybe it will end up dealing with a transaction at some point or some other structures that it is referencing. So we keep that in mind. Another interesting field is the linked list of enlistments, which is named enlistment head. And basically it's a linked list of enlistments all associated with that transaction, which is potentially interesting from the reversing perspective. If we see it loops over the elements of that list, so just in the process of reversing and, and debugging, we found all the cookies value associated with all the different structures types. And so we document them here. This is mostly useless if you are just trying to debug, but it can be useful when you're trying to analyze raw memory from the heap and you quickly want to see where is the K transaction in memory or other structure because you're not exactly sure at what offset it starts at the moment. You can quickly see the cookie because they use this BOOB000 something. And so from memory, you can then correlate to, okay, the cookie is at offset whatever. And I see this boob 
boob01 cookie and so I can deduce where the start of the structure is. Another thing is all the KTM structures have their own pull tag. So this is useful when you're dumping things like with the bang pull command in WinBag to see what is on that actual pool. For instance, if you see a TM EM pool tag, you know you can print the actual object as a K enlistment structure to see the contents of that object. So there is the transaction manager. It is usually the first thing you have to create at all, even before the transaction, because there has to be something to manage the transaction. But while studying KTM, you don't necessarily know that this is the first thing you have to create. So you would basically have to look at existing functions and experiment to figure that out. So in the kernel, it will create a specific KTM structure, which is basically the transaction manager structure. And it is allocated on the non page pool. And we know its tag is TMTM. TM. There are a few interesting flags. The most interesting one is probably the flag that dictates whether or not the transaction manager is volatile. So there is something that is not super well documented on the MSDN, if I recall correctly. And it could take you quite a while to realize that the volatile flag could be useful because you could create transaction managers. You could do all the stuff you want with them. And so you think the volatile flag doesn't matter. And yeah, so basically normally by default, a transaction manager is durable, which means it has a log that lets you actually see the activity and the results of what is going on with your transactions. But then later, when you are writing the exploit and triggering a whole ton of functionality in KTM, what you would realize is that a transaction manager has a log associated with it and all of the operations are being written to the log file and eventually it runs out of space. And if that happens, it won't let you do any operations anymore because like 10,000 operations later, KTM says that was too many. And so the solution is to make the transaction manager volatile, which means there is no log created. And this is just, again, an example of experimentation that is required. It ends up being related to exploitation. But when you are reading the documentation and experimenting, you don't know it will be useful yet. You would have to play with different flags and then end up realizing it is actually useful for exploitation. So again, we see the KTM structure has a cookie value and it has a mutex. We also start to realize that most of these structures have a state field and the state usually corresponds to an enum that is publicly documented. Also, it has a flags field, which basically indicates the type and state of the structure, but that one is undocumented. So you end up needing to know what certain flags are eventually, which will lead to a lot of reversing. For instance, using function names from Microsoft symbols and seeing where the undocumented flags are set, changed or checked to do certain things. You can figure out what the undocumented flags might be. Uh, you have the TMRM pointer, which is a linked list of associated resource managers. And then you have other fields that don't matter much. For instance, there is a file object that ends up pointing to the log file but we don't end up using a log file anyway because we use a volatile transaction manager. So it is things you recognize because you know file object is a type of object managed by the object manager. So it might be interesting, but it turns out not to be the case for us. This is just an example of the undocumented flags that at first we had no idea what they were. But for instance, we found that if we pass from Reusalon the flag that says the transaction manager should be volatile, the kernel sets value one in the flags. So we named it KTM flag volatile to help in reversing more functions. And then also by reversing and figuring out errors returned and the logic of functions, we can figure out most of these flags. At the end, most of the other flags, aside from the volatile one, are probably not interesting for exploitation, but you don't really know in advance while you're trying to understand KTM internals. And generally, they still help with reversing to understand the logic of functions and know if the functions are you are actually reversing are actually interesting versus not. Again, the API you can use from userland is quite straightforward and the only arguments that are really interesting are the flag that says it is volatile and the log file name being null since we don't want to create a log file 
Now let's talk about the resource manager. There are always has to be some resource like files or registry keys or something that is going to be part of a transaction. But the whole point of a transaction is to do something atom atomically. So there is at least one resource manager associated with the transaction manager for a transaction to take place. So you always create the transaction manager first and then immediately after you create the resource manager because one of the arguments required to create the resource manager is actually a handle to the transaction manager. You can notice there is the optional description argument, which at first you might not be interested in, but it turns out it can be very useful for exploitation in the end, which is again a reason why playing around with APIs and testing what setting a description field from userNone looks like in kernel memory is actually useful to see how you could use it during the exploitation phase. And sometimes when you're playing around, it seems you're wasting time, but little things like that can actually pay off when it reminds you that it exists later when looking for exploitation primitives. So the kernel structure for resource manager is called K resource manager. There are actually a lot of interesting fields here. There are the standard fields we mentioned already for other structures like cookie, state, flags, and mutex. There are two other fields which are the notification queue and the notification mutex, which are also interesting. You don't know why it is interesting at first, but basically by reversing KTM, you can find out that when certain activity related to a resource manager happens, that information can be placed into a notification queue so that from userlearn, you can query the resource manager and say, hey, what's been going on and get a list of all the activity. And that can be really useful for inspecting the state of the kernel from userlearn. And then there are some other things that are sort of vaguely interesting from exploitation perspective, like a function pointer named notification routine. That's actually interesting in general, because if we could leak the address of a key resource manager object, and we had a right primitive, and the function pointer was called somehow, then we, we know we could potentially get code, code execution. So lots of things to track and think about as you poke around structures. Another field is the enlistment head pointer, which is basically a linked list of associated enlistments. And again, as soon as you start playing around with the resource manager APIs and you look at the structure, if you remember the function that we want to start reversing related to the bug, which is the TM re recover resource manager X. So all of, a, all of a sudden, the K resource manager structure is really relevant because we know the TM recover resource manager X function is referencing this structure based off the names, both dealing with resource manager. And so all of the fields from this structure are immediately just more interesting in general, because we know we may have to look at them again in the future. Again, these are undocumented flags that we were able to work out for the resource manager. In the end, we reversed and documented almost all of the flags, if I recall correctly. So we were able to work out a lot of the logic re related to these flags. And so finally, let's talk about enlistments them themselves. Again, the the create enlistment API is used to create enlistment, as you would imagine. There needs to be an associated resource manager created already, so you need to pass the resource manager handle. Also, you have to be enlisting in some transaction, so you need to pass the transaction handle. And if I recall correctly from the documentation, you can see that typically a transaction will have multiple enlistments associated with it. Because yeah, let's say we want to be creating a transaction with only one enlistment, because maybe there is only one piece of work to be done, but then that piece of work would be atomic anyway. So there is no need to have a transaction. So generally the idea is that there is a lot of work being done, each with an associated enlistment, and they all have to be synchronized with each other for the transaction to actually happen. The canon structure for an enlistment is called k enlistment. We see the k enlistment has a GUID associated with it, which is uh, randomly generated for each enlistment be being created. There are the standard fields we mentioned already, like the cookie, state, flags, and mutex. There are two linked lists. The first one is all the enlistments that are associated with a given resource manager. Some of those enlistments might be associated with transaction A and others might be associated with transaction B. But because we know the transaction also has its own linked list of all the enlistments only associated with that transaction, it comes as no surprise that there is a second linked list of all the enlistments associated with the same transaction. Another field is a pointer to the resource manager structure associated with the enlistments. 
And also another field is a pointer to the transaction structure that the enlistment is actually doing work for. There is also a notification mask, which basically dictates what notifications should be queued to the resource manager related to this enlistment. And this field will be especially useful when we get to reversing the TM re recover resource manager X function. But again, you can't know in advance what fields will or won't be interesting for sure. Again, we list undocumented flags we found related to enlistments. A lot of these are not actually relevant for exploitation. One of them is this superior enlistment flag and the MSDN documentation for the superior enlistment is really hard to understand if you get started with KTM in general. And I think I still don't understand how that works entirely and what they were going for it with it. But when we found this superior flag, and so you have enlistment that are of the superior type, which turns out to be not interesting for exploitation, but you can actually abuse the fact that in general, all, all, all enlistments are not superior. And so if somehow you set a superior flag in a given enlistment, it can help with debugging because the kernel code that checks this flag in different places and so you would only hit certain portion of codes if that flag is set. And so it can help with debugging in general. So it's easier to debug the vulnerability. And so it's useful to know it exists as it speeds up debugging and hence exploitation. All the flags that are interesting are this finalized flag. Basically, when all of the work associated with an K enlistment has actually been completed, then nothing else will happen because it is kind of done in theory that k enlistment is sort of ready to be deleted because there is nothing else that can happen. And so when it is prepared to be deleted, it will set this flag to indicate it is finalized. There is also another flag that is interesting, which is the is notifiable one. We saw earlier that the resource manager has a notification queue. And by poking around, it turns out that the, when the a K enlistment has had some state changes associated with it, it may be notifiable, meaning that information about that K enlistment state changes will be queued into the notification queue. And if the K enlistment is not notifiable, it won't queue that information. So again, at first, when you are reversing these types of flag, none of these means anything because we don't really know any anything about it, but it can seem a little bit weird. But at the end, a lot of it is quite useful. So one of the things that will end up being relevant is how to actually finalize and free an enlistment. Because later, once we diff better the vulnerable function and document the code to understand the vulnerability, we'll see that it basically involves an enlistment that becomes free and it is a use after free bug. So there is still a reference to the freed enlistment somewhere and the enlistment is reused, resulting in a use after free. And so we found that there is this function called TMP finalize enlistment that typically lowers the reference count of the K enlistment object, which dictates whether or not the enlistment can be freed by the object manager if it reaches zero. But then the question is, when does TMP finalize enlistment get called? And it turns out enlistments have a series of states associated with them and all the enlistments associated with the same transaction have to have corresponding states. And so to ensure that the transaction is happening atomically, all of the enlistments kind of work together and only when they all are synchronized on a specific state saying that part of their work is done, they all transition to the next state and move forward. And so the final state of enlistment is when they become committed, which means the final work has been done. And so when we found that there is a user API called commit complete, which can trigger that state transition, it was a lot easier to trigger that state changes. And so eventually any other references that are held into that enlistment, once they are all dropped, the enlistment object, which will actually be freed by the object manager. However, in general, since you have been using the enlistment from userland and have created it with the create enlistment function in the first place, you will still have a handle to it from userland. And so the final reference is removed by calling close handle. And finally, this frees the enlistment. So this is the same diagram we saw earlier, but this time we have a little bit more understanding of relations between the different structures. And so the relationship is a little bit more meaningful. The linked lists are a little bit more meaningful as to what they are pointing to and why they are associated with the other structures. And so when you think about KTM in the kernel in general, our mental model is mostly just thinking about this type of relationship of structures more than anything else.